All right, welcome to another episode of Immersive Minds with me, Tan. Right now, I have a very special guest joining me all the way from New York City, Mr. Ori Imba. How's it going, Ori? Hey, Tan. Good to see you. Hey, everybody. Not many people, were, in my opinion, were thinking about augmented reality in 2007. So how did you... How did you get into it? What was your first contact with AR? Yeah, that's true. Not many, but there were uh, there were quite a few. Um, it was kind of uh, something that was hidden in a few labs around the world, and you know, a handful of companies working in the space. Um, but you know, usually when I, when I I'm asked about my origin story, I talk about my kids. You know, seeing them always in front of a screen, whether it's a, you know, a small screen or a large screen. And it was always this uh, uh, attempt to get them away from the screens and more into the real world. And of course, you know, you can't really deprive them from digital information. So the, the idea was how, how do we bring together digital information and the real world? So people are more engaged with the real world. Uh, after you know, after many years um, in you know startups, and and uh, one was was acquired by SAP, large corporation, and really working with enterprise companies, enterprise software, I was looking for something something new, you know, something that would be very promising, something I can really focus my attention for, you know, the next decade or two, uh, and but it, it was. I was looking for something kind of underdeveloped, right? And when I searched the the term, you know, merging digital with reality, I discovered this term augmented reality, which I was blown away, but I, I never heard about it until 2007. <laughs> and once I started researching, I realized this is this is really kind of a big game changer for how we interact with not just computers, but the world itself with with each other. And uh, like I said, it was completely hidden. Just, you know, a few labs were working on this. And uh, it felt like this is something that can really, uh, we can re really make a mark on by helping this become mainstream, bringing it to everybody, making it bigger and, and better. Yeah, so I love that. That's and how I, I kind of started. I love you mentioned the kids because I never thought about it that way because I have kids and yeah, we do want to keep them away from screens. But we also don't want to deprive them of all the power that this digital information age can give them. So exactly, we it would be wrong. I mean, you it, can't do that in this day and age. But yeah, but damaging your eyes with these blue screens, uh, staring at the phones all day—that that shouldn't be the way, the only way for us to access information. Absolutely. So you saw potential in it straight away in 2007. Uh, when did you first actually do something about it? When did you invest I mean, right, time right and energy? Away, you know, I, I started writing a, a blog about it because I felt, you know, nobody's writing about this. That, you know, you got to start sharing information. And through that, I, I made connection with these labs. You know, I went to a few uh, events in, in those very early years and uh, probably the most uh, impactful one was uh, the ISMAR event in 2008. ISMAR is the uh, premier academic event for AR that started, you know, over 25 years ago. And uh, when there, you know, it was in Cam Cambridge, uh, the UK, and I, I was completely blown away by what's happening there, but, you know, how much has already been put into this. But I was also, they were also blown away by the fact that there's an actual blogger in the audience <laughs> blogging about this live and uh, i mean for, for them because they they felt like you know there's such a tiny group of of crazy people in a room uh, and nobody was really aware of what's happening so so that was kind of a big change for me also kind of to connect with these labs and really understand what's going on in the industry and and as early as 2007 i started to create some concept videos about you know, what kind of AR games could actually happen in the real world? Uh, and, you know, they, they kind of look funny today when you look back at yep. those early videos. But a lot of the concepts are, are, some of them are still not completely realized even today, right? Oh. So 
it, it shows that, you know, we've gone a long way since 2007, definitely, no doubt about it. But there's still a long way to go. Yeah, to re- we're still re- early uh, days. As you know, as, a, as a, someone that is really looking like f- for for a new career, for a new area to focus on, like like I was in 2007, there's still a lot of interesting opportunities, even within AR and VR, to reinvent things. You know, anything from how you interact in this uh, kind of spatial uh, computing way. How do you create glasses that really look not, aren't look, don't look so big, but look like uh, some of the smaller glasses on this side? And you know, creation tools and and apps that you know you can't leave home without. So so there's a lot that can still be invented in the space, and and I think it's exciting for also for people that have never uh, been or even thought about AR and VR to jump into it right now. In those early days, like this mission, the mission statement to further humanity, to advance humanity, were you like, that That seems like a bold statement and I love it. I personally love it. I think AR will play a huge role in advancing humanity. But again, so far, 14 years ago, you were thinking really ahead. Like, did you have any, you know, what were the comments and criticisms you heard? At that time, when you when you thought this would AR would advance humanity, uh, I mean, you know, I think you know people today in the industry would say there's a lot of skeptics, there's a lot of pushback, uh, there's all these kind of uh, uh, headwinds that anyone in the industry is feeling has been feeling for for many years. Uh, so you know, imagine how it felt back then, right? Uh, first of all, had, nobody had an. an any idea what it is so so every conversation is you know you have to really start explaining and but then see a lot of head scratching so you know but how are we going to use it yeah. you know what is it how is it relevant for my company or or for my you know daily life it was always hard to show especially you know if you think back in 2009 the you couldn't run ar on an iphone without jailbreaking it right so there was really no way except for, you know, a webcam on a computer or some very esoteric glasses to uh, to experience it, right? So, again, with the ups and downs and with a lot of pushback, but, uh, you know, today it's, you know, it's a massive industry. We're looking at uh, about thir- over $35 billion industry this year. And that's, you know, it's not a, an emerging tech anymore. Of course, it's still growing and growing fast, but it's not uh, this tiny little niche anymore. We've come a long way. Do, do you think we have a definitive term to to encapsulate these immer- um, this immersive technology? Because we tried Metaverse. We've tried XR. Is it spatial computing? Do you think we need that term? I think history will determine what term we'll use in the future. Um, you know, when the internet came out, you know, some people called it, you know, cyberspace. Some yes. people call it the, the information highway, super highway, uh, all, all these kind of things, right? And uh, and I think the same will happen with this. I mean, at some point, maybe people will just call it reality. You know, it's it's <laughs> not going to be even something completely different. Um, I think there's definitely a lot of uh, acronyms a lot of confusion um so i i I usually try to keep it um uh to minimize uh the number of terms that we use i mean there's there's uh ar on one side of the spectrum there's vr on the other side of the spectrum and xr we, we try not to use the term extended reality because i think it's confusing XR is more of kind of a, a collective name. Instead of saying AR, VR, MR, all these kind of things, you just say XR as a collective term. And it, it kind of was uh, adopted, I think, by the industry, maybe not by the the largest, Public. you know, the larger population around the world. But uh, in the industry, it's, it's pretty common to use XR as a, as a collective term. And, you know, spatial computing has been around for, for many years, um, but was always kind of... Uh, on the side, and I think because just it's maybe just longer and and more uh, amorphic in a way. And of course, you know, Apple brought it back with the Vision Pro. It's it's not AR, it's not VR, it's a spatial computer, and it's cool. I I really like it. I think I like it the most. 
if you look at the the one thing that separates this new wave of computing from the previous waves is that it's spatial yes and you know even you know in in Ivan Sutherland's uh very first AR and VR demo in 1968 the the number one thing you mentioned about it is that you know you're looking at an object on this display and when you move your head it will behave exactly like a real object would behave in real life right essentially it's spatial interaction and yep. I personally like it a lot I of course you know still we still use the previous terms just to make sure people understand what we're talking about but I think spatial computing is a great term yeah I love it because it it actually describes it the, the name the description is in the name yeah okay so let's talk a little bit about Long Beach then uh are you excited I mean only a few weeks ago uh what are your hopes for this year or what are you looking forward to well it's a very special year because it, first of all it's our 15th anniversary of AWE and I would argue also the 15th anniversary of the XR industry you know so as Ooh. I mentioned you know, 2009 things started to come together became commercial and in 2010 is kind of where I think the first year it really uh, became uh, a real industry uh, so 15 years that's a that's a it's worth celebrating number. We're absolutely celebrating. Uh, and it's also because this year is actually, I think, uh, looking like a breakthrough year for XR. A lot of things are kind of sort of breaking the, the glass ceiling that uh, XR was, was facing. The, the number of headsets sold, the number of people using it, the number of enterprises using it, the investment communities is kind of looking back at it after a couple of years of, of uh, low. So it looks like a breakthrough year. And it's a great time to look back at our history and learn from it so we can create the future. So what you see, what you see at AWE this year is a lot about that theme, you know, of, uh, uh, you know, so, so we, we recently announced the uh, XR Hall of Fame, where we selected one together with, uh, you know, a, uh, industry experts, 101 pioneers who built this industry uh, to celebrate them, to honor them, but also to learn from them uh, during the event and before and after. So that's that's going to be a big focus of the event. And there's also an XR museum, which will feature over 80 vintage AR and VR devices from the past 50 years, you know, donated by pioneers. Some of them are prototypes, some actual products that were uh, attempting to get into the market. And it also kind of gives you a great sense of the evolution of this. And the fact that it's not, this is not so new. This is something that people have been working on with a lot of perseverance and a lot of uh, stubbornness over many, many decades uh, to get to this point that we're at today. So, so that, that's uh, kind of a big part of the, the history theme. And also uh, the agenda will be packed with history talks. There's going to be a, a talk about, you know, almost in each one of the 14 tracks there will be something uh, like a pioneer or or a very experienced um, expert uh, talk about how we got to where we are in each one of the areas you know from the technology to enterprise to collaboration to development tools and so on and so forth so i think we hope that this will really give the industry uh, a better understanding of where we're coming from so that we can uh, build the this industry for the next decade, uh, but you know the event the event is going to be uh, in our new home in Long Beach, California, for the first time. You know, for 14 years we've been in Santa Clara. Uh, it's been a great place for us to grow, but we have kind of the, the the event has exploded over the capacity of that venue, and uh, we found a fantastic new venue in Long Beach, California. Uh, we're excited about the Los Angeles metro area, which is really a vibrant community, a lot of entertainment and also tech that is uh, growing there. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of the capital of entertainment and gaming of the world, which is, of course, a big focus for XR. And the, the venue is, you know, it's two and a half size uh, uh, times larger. Uh, and a lot of, you know, restaurants and hotels right across, across the street and around the convention. So, I think it's going to be a, a much nicer experience for everybody. 
And uh, we're already seeing, you know, uh, tremendous interest from both exhibitors and attendees. We're expecting 300, over 300 exhibitors, 500 speakers from across the industry, and around 6,000 attendees. So uh, it's promising to be probably the largest XR event ever. Okay. All right. Before we finish, uh, I'd like to just end with, um, because you've been in so many before this, uh, you had a huge early parts of your career with Super Ventures. And I would love to know, like, what were some of the, do you have one or two mottos you live by? What are some of the big lessons you learned uh, throughout your career that you still apply today? Yeah, you know, it's, I, I kind of touched on these things. Uh, and and, and uh, I, w- I would want to highlight three things that uh, have been kind of really um guiding light for me, especially in the, in the past 17, 18 years. Um, one is, you know, I, I mentioned that I, I've been, you know, in a few startups, internet uh, startups for enterprises, kind of bringing the internet to, to large companies in the 90s. And then with SAP, you know, where kind of we, we helped, uh, helped them develop the uh, enterprise portal, which, uh, you know, where we worked with 40,000 of the biggest companies. And it was amazing. I mean, it was really amazing to um, to see that that growth. But it felt like you know, uh, what I want to do moving forward is really fine. And, and anyone else, you know, uh, is really trying to find an area where you can be exceptional in something that is very specific. So you know, I want to be great at my my job that's that's awesome but you know find something you know i found ar in 2007 but as i said you know even within that uh the xr world there's a lot of things that still can be reinvented and and uh, innovated so you know find something specific be an expert in that thing and uh try to be the best in that so that that's kind of one thing yep the second it. thing is probably uh, a lesson that everyone in the XR industry has seen in the last 15 years is, is that you need to have perseverance. You know, you believe in something, keep going at it. Uh, don't jump on, you know, new shiny things that pop up because then, you know, again, you're not really focused on one thing that you become an expert. Of course, you have to bet on something that is worthwhile, that can really grow and, and become a, a big, big part of society in the future. But perseverance is really important together with agility, right? I mean, don't be stubborn where you just focus on one thing, even if it's not working for many years, but have the agility to to pivot, you know, to to adapt, uh, but keep kind of the the high level mission in mind and focus on it. And finally, it's it's the uh, the idea that um, nothing happens in a void, nothing happens in isolation. So industry collaboration is the key thing for every person, for every company, and for the industry at large. Again, that's that's why we started with AWE. We, we felt like getting together the, the few people that were working in the industry back then could help us grow. And, and I think it, it had an impact. So be exceptional, exceptional at something specific, have perseverance with agility, and uh, collaboration is really what drives you and your company and every industry forward. Boom, beautifully put. Ori, thank you so much. See you in California. Thank you, Dan. Bye-bye.